Greetings and salutations fellow book readers. This is Mark and the book I will review today is Steppenwolf. Before we continue, this is personalized limited edition of Steppenwolf with leather cover designed and made by me. At the end of the video I will tell you a couple of ways of how you can get one for yourself if you are interested. Now let's get back to the review. Steppenwolf is a 1927 novel by the German writer Hermann Hesse. Uh, besides novels, Hesse also wrote poetry and painted. His interest seems to be in the individual as a spiritual being. Maybe it was influenced by his family's history. The grandparents were missionaries in India and Hesse's mother was born there. He himself studied theology and became interested in Buddhism early in his life, inspired by Schopenhauer, who probably was the first Western philosopher to use Buddhism as an important part of an influence on his philosophy. Well, there were Kant's philosophical links to the Indian religions, but they seem more incidental. Hesse himself traveled through India, probably looking for spiritual enlightenment, and the time spent there resulted in the writing of his novel Siddhartha. Actually, the trip seemed a bit of disappointment, and perhaps Siddhartha was how he would like the trip to have been, spiritually. Hesse's beliefs also caused him to be a non-conforming pacifist, and he expressed his anti-war feelings openly in a public letter at the beginning of World War I that love is greater than hate, understanding greater than ire, peace nobler than war. This exactly is what this unholy world war should burn into our memories, more so than ever felt before. He was criticized for it and called unpatriotic by the nationalists. Hesse relays some of his anti-war feelings in Steppenwolf. I like to mention also that Hesse was born in the 1870s, the decade that produced other two great writers of German magical realism, Thomas Mann and Franz Kafka. He also met the great psychologist Carl Jung during one of his family crises, and the two men became friends. What is Steppenwolf about? It is about the struggle and hope to find reasons and energy to live, the novel deals with midlife crisis, when one finds himself alone and disconnected from others, and the things that were fun in youth seem pointless now. So one tries to find meaning at what might be lying ahead, and if there is meaning, the question is, is it worth the effort to pursue it? Most men will not swim before they are able to. Is that not witty? Naturally, they won't swim. They are born for the solid earth not for the water, and naturally they won't think, they are made for life, not for thought. Yes, and he who thinks, what's more, he who makes thought his business, he may go far in it, but he has bartered the solid earth for the water all the same, and one day he will drown. The novel is also about the eternal struggle between society and individual, how society tries to kill the individual instinct in each one of us, our ability for individual unique thoughts. But the struggle is internal between two sides of our personality, social middle class bourgeois versus the inner solitary animal spirit, the middle class bourgeois in the book doesn't refer to the economic position, but rather it is a state of mind, part of one's identity. That's why the rich are also dominated by it. They are nothing more than the middle class on steroids, driven by the same basic principles and ideology, acquisition and consumption. A bit of the plot. Set in the backdrop of post-World War I Germany, the novel follows Harry Heller, an eccentric intellectual who struggles with the contradictions of his dual, human and wolf-like personality. The novel begins with the unnamed narrator explaining how he became acquainted with and came to possess the written reflections of a mysterious individual, Harry Heller, who calls himself Steppenwolf. The rest of the book is the narrator reading the notes left behind by Steppenwolf. There was once a man, Harry, called the Steppenwolf. 
He went on two legs, wore clothes, and was a human being. But nevertheless, he was in reality a wolf of the steppes. He had learned a good deal of all that people of a good intelligence can, and was a fairly clever fellow. What he had not learned, however, was this, to find contentment in himself and his own life. Heller expresses his disillusionment with society and his own identity. He struggles with feelings of alienation and disconnection from the bourgeois lifestyle of that time. He sees himself as a steppenwolf, a lone wolf wandering through what he sees as a foreign and empty landscape of life, unable to find comfort or purpose in the world around him. And this makes Harry suffer. As the story progresses, he encounters a young woman, he names Hermione, a female version of Herman, his childhood friend. Hermione is a paid companion, a prostitute, who works in a dance hall. She is an animated and free-spirited being who introduces Harry to the pleasurable nightlife of the city. Through his interactions with Hermione and some of her friends, beautiful Maria, and wise musician Pablo, Heller is forced to confront his repressed desires and contradicting aspects of his personality. And that's the basic plot. What are my thoughts about Steppenwolf? It is a complex read, and to be fully appreciated and understood, it should be read in a specific period of one's life, the certain psychological spots some of us arrive at. Many teenagers seem to be obsessed about reading it, but looking back at myself, I doubt they are able to understand the deeper meaning behind the plot. It is possible I wasn't as enlightened as some youngsters nowadays. To be fair, there are some ideas that might resonate with some younger readers, but they are not the main theme of the book. Hesse warns in the preface that people will see what they want to see and even misinterpret what is written. For me, the novel explores, from a more mature perspective of living, the complexities of the human experience. It deals with alienation and existential crisis, how they feed off each other, and as an attempt at survival, we search for some kind of deeper meaning in our existence. The book takes on the complexity of the human condition, the conflict between the intellectual and wild animal-like sides of the human nature. It questions the nature of our existence and how society tries to shape our identity. There is no reality except the one contained within us. That is why so many people live such an unreal life. They take the images outside of them for reality and never allow the world within to assert itself. We are being pulled by our inner nature and by the outside world, often in the opposite directions, so we need to reflect on who we are and what we want. And this reflection on ourselves requires solitude and solitude leads to detachment and loneliness. And this is the price we pay for trying to understand ourselves, to give some meaning to our existence. Solitude is independence. It had been my wish, and with the years I had attained it. It was cold, oh, cold enough, but it was also still, wonderfully still and vast, like the cold stillness of space in which the stars revolve. It is lonely, but at the same time comfortable, because there is synchronicity with who we are. There is the present but temporary pain of feeling alone, but the reward might be the eternal contentment achieved by eliminating the struggle of trying to be somebody else, by not going against our nature. All the feelings of loneliness and detachment make us identify as a solitary individual, a lone wolf. I am in truth the steppenwolf that I often call myself, that beast astray that finds neither home nor joy nor nourishment in a world that is strange and incomprehensible to him. Many North American natives believe that each of us carries inside an animal spirit. Maybe there is a remaining part of our previous life, who we were, something encoded in our individual genes. Perhaps life is a cycle of evolution, genetic. We start as a single cell organism 
and through cycles of birth we become more complex, passing through many physical forms. We pass our genes on and on until we reach the top. And what happens after it is anybody's guess. Some individuals might not procreate because they might have reached the end of their genetic evolution. Who knows? Hesse seems to use Heller to dive deep into his own psyche, to explore themes of duality, inner conflict, and the struggle to reconcile one's own nature. Heller's journey is a tumultuous one, as he battles with his own self-loathing and desperation. He becomes a temporary boarder in the narrator Anne's house, where the narrator also resides. When entering the house for the first time, he sniffs the odors like a true animal. He seems a man from another world, strange, even hostile, but he tries to be polite and friendly. He's kind of awkward and uncomfortable playing the part of social animal and trying to fit in by going against his true nature. The narrator can sense the Steppenwolf's strange nature and initially is against him staying in the house. This is probably a common reaction Steppenwolf receives from others and that's why the effort to disguise his nature. The world Steppenwolf finds so foreign and unfriendly is the bourgeois middle-class society. He describes it as an escape, a denial of our primal nature. My dear sir, I would not for the world laugh at the bourgeois life. It is true that I live myself in another world and perhaps I could not endure to live a single day in a house with aura carries. But though I am a shabby old Steppenwolf, still from the son of a mother, and my mother too was a middle class man's wife, and raised plants, and took care to have her house and home as clean and neat and tidy as ever she could make it. He admits he is part of it, he was born into it, and inhabits it. That's why the struggle against it is so difficult, because it is a struggle against part of ourselves. The part that looks for physical comfort and material security, a short-term gratification. And there is even some regret that he can't be part of it, because the other, wild part of him won't allow it. But I came to see more and more that from the empty spaces of his lone wolfishness, he actually really admired and loved our little bourgeois world as something solid and secure as the home and peace which must ever remain far and unattainable. Some things we might want, but we realize we are not capable to have them. We live in the middle class bourgeois world and there is a price to be paid for trying to be Steppenwolf in it. The middle class world, its attractions, is after Steppenwolf, trying to destroy him in each one of us. It is the theme of the book, the inner struggle, resistance within us, to the extremes that pull us in opposite directions. But this is nothing more than trying to maintain some kind of balance in our lives, an effort to get us back into the middle before we cross the line into the land of no return. Now, what we call bourgeois, when regarded as an element always to be found in human life, is nothing else than the search for a balance. It is the striving after a mean between the countless extremes and opposites that arise in human conduct. It is not uncommon to discover that the individuals engaged in extreme behavior, good or bad, are discovered to have been involved in other extreme opposite behavior. All of us need some balance in our lives, and perhaps that's all life is, the search or struggle for balance, which seems necessary for staying alive. That's why individuals who don't find it go too far because there is nothing pulling them back, a counterweight, and they end up dead, often by suicide. So balance is nothing more than control. You controlling the extremes instead of them controlling you, giving them just enough room so the pressure doesn't build up and they don't explode, but at the same time don't allow them to pull you too far away. I read a short time ago one of the books in the Tom Ripley series, the other one when Ripley is a mature man, and in it you can see that he achieved control over his vices, the instinct to kill, because he really likes the middle class bourgeois lifestyle, the material perks it offers. 
So perhaps control is achieved by having something else in your life, enticing and pleasurable, having many options or choices in life. And in the novel, this is shown when Steppenwolf sees many reflections in the mirrors. So the solution might be to just stay in the middle. But the danger of it is that life will become an uneventful, monotone existence. But the worst of it is that it is just this contentment that I cannot endure. After a short time, it fills me with irrepressible hatred and nausea. In desperation, I have to escape and throw myself on the road to pleasure, or, if that cannot be, on the road to pain.